Hello everybody and welcome to Kangaroo English. This is another live English class. I am very happy um, to have you all here today. Um, I don't know what it's like in your country, but at the moment, one day it's summer, the next day it's winter, then summer, then winter, and sometimes it's summer and winter in the same day. It's crazy. Um, yeah, I, I hope that you are all well, and I hope today that you are feeling motivated to, um, to learn some English, because today we are going to do various activities, okay? I have some, some fun activities planned. Um, I don't know if um, all of you watched my previous live class, uh, live class, no, my previous class about Australian English. Well, I, in this video, I, I went to the Perth Zoo and I met some native Australian animals, uh, an echidna and a uh, grey kangaroo, and what else, a snake, uh, a, a python, and a quokka, a little baby quokka. Um, but one animal which I didn't meet at the zoo, which is a, another famous Australian animal, is the platypus. Well, platypus. Now, this, this animal is, is very strange because it is a, a monotreme. Uh, a monotreme is a mammal that lays eggs. Now, now, that's not normal, okay, because normally a mammal gives birth to a baby. It doesn't lay eggs. So, this animal is very strange. Platypus, okay, this is, this is um, a combination of two, I think, I think Latin words, but I'm not sure. So, pus, pus means foot, okay, like octopus, eight, eight feet, octopus, but this is platypus, which means flat. So platypus basically means flat feet, because it has flat feet similar to a duck. And <laughs> somebody on the internet created this, this perfect explanation of a platypus, and I wanted to show you, okay? So basically, this is a platypus. If, if you take a beaver playing a guitar, and you combine it with a duck playing a piano, <laughs> then, then you have a platypus playing a, a guitar piano thing. <laughs> and um, this is the, the perfect Venn diagram to describe a platypus. <laughs> a duck, um, the duck beaver combination. <laughs> um, also, because I am a teacher, I am super excited because today I bought some new chalk. Look at this. Isn't, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> so exciting. My new chalk. What, what a fantastic day. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so um, on the Facebook page, um, uh, Amanda... She she sent me some some also some other funny some other funny um, uh, cartoons about English. So uh, let's have a look at two of them. Okay. So th the first one is um, this one: assault with a deadly weapon. So the the question is why is that funny? It's funny because um, it's funny because assault is the pronunciation is exactly the same to uh, as 
assault. Assault with a deadly weapon. <laughs> um, these, these types of jokes in English are um, play, they're, they're games with words, a play with words. Or the more technical name is a pun. So yes, a pun. A pun is when we, we, we play with words for, for a humorous effect. Okay, uh, so let's look at one more, this, this one here, which is, so we have three bullets talking, and they say, what happened to you? And the other bullet says, I got fired. <laughs> because in English, um, fired has two meanings. The first meaning is, is when, you, when you fire a bullet. And the second meaning is when somebody throws you out of your job. You, clear out your desk and go. You're fired. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, these puns are, are really funny. Um, another cartoon. This is not so funny. <laughs> I'll fight you with my bare hands. Oh dear. <laughs> I I, I'm really sorry. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, okay. Now the reason the reason that this is funny is because um, we have two words in English that sound very similar. The first word is bear. Bear, and the second word is bear, spelled like this. And the second word bear means basically no no covering, N naked, N no no protection. So when I say my bare hands, there's no gloves. There's no tape, no protection. My, my bare hands. My naked hands. <laughs> um, okay, so let, let's have a look at some of your comments because you guys, honestly, you are some of the funniest students in the world. Um, so, yes. <laughs> Marco, that's so true. Um, in Spain, it's true at the moment. If... If you don't like the weather, wait one minute, <laughs> and then maybe it will be summer. <laughs> it's, it's very true. I, I love that expression. Um, yes, so let's have a look. Uh, uh, uh. Yes, yeah, so Didier, Didier says that a platypus is called an ornithorinc in French. Yes, and in Spanish it's an ornithorinco. Um, yeah, so it's very similar. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, hello to, to everybody. Um, I'm just reading your comments now. We have people from Brazil, Poland, from Guinea, Colombia, Turkey. Um, okay. Uh, uh, okay, let's have a look. Um, 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 uh, so, <laughs> there's someone in here called, I don't know what's going on. And he said that there's another funny... Um, Right, tomatoes. <laughs> There's another pun in English, which is which is this I love you from my head, tomatoes. <laughs> to tomatoes? T tomatoes? But the pronunciation is similar to I love you from my head from my head to oh my god I can't I can't bring my leg up that high I'm not very flexible from my <laughs> from my head to my toes to my toes tomatoes wow. okay you get the idea <laughs> okay very funny Okay, so in Italian, it's an ornitoringo. 
Ornitoringo, it's the same. This is this is the fantastic thing about um, about a European languages is that they have a lot of cognates, a lot of words that are very similar. So it's easy for an Italian to learn Spanish, much easier than an Italian to learn Arabic, for example. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's start the class because I have a lot of things I want to do today. So um, the first thing is that today, together, we are going to practice some pronunciation. Okay? Now, this is a bit strange because I can't hear your pronunciation. But it's not important. We're going to focus on the physical aspects of pronunciation. Hello, Seren. I love you too. <laughs> okay. Um. <clears throat> okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first, so to practice our physical, physical pronunciation, we are going to practice with pairs of words. So two words together. Okay. So um, the first, the first combination that we can look at is the combination of, um, yeah, let's do this one. Okay. Let's do these two. Uh, maybe maybe I should write it a bit bigger. Yeah, let me write it a bit bigger. Okay, here we go. Okay, so uh, worse and verse. Now, my question is, what is the difference physically, physically the difference between this letter? And this letter. Who can, who can explain the difference in the physical position between W and V? Tell me, please. I'm waiting for you to tell me. <laughs> uh, so, um... Nisreen says that she has her IELTS exam on Saturday. Nisreen, don't be afraid, okay? You have, I hope, you have studied a lot. You have put in a lot of hard work. And this is not an opportunity for you to fail. It's not an opportunity for you to do badly in the exam. This is the opportunity to say, hey... Look at all of the work that I have done. I'm going to kill this exam. I can use phrasal verbs. I know my grammar. I can express myself. Okay? Be confident. A, a little bit of nerves is good because it helps with your adrenaline. It helps to, to keep your mind active. Okay? So be a bit nervous. But don't be afraid, okay? It's your moment to shine, Nizreen. And I'm sure that you will get the result that you deserve, okay? So if you've worked really hard, you'll get a, a great mark. And if you've been lazy, if you've been watching Netflix, okay, and on Facebook, you're going to get a bad mark. That's the reality. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um... Okay, great. You guys, fantastic. So, Mayela says, yes, it's the way that you put your lips. It's very true. The key is your lips. Mario says that the difference, the, the W is kisses. Exactly, it's kisses. Um, Didier says that the V is with the lips. Mariam says the first one is bilabial. And the second one is labiodental. This is absolutely true. You guys are totally correct, okay? So, in reality, W is two U's together. It's a vowel. Ooh. See, like kisses. Ooh. 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 Okay? This is the woo. And then here, we want to bite our lip. 
Mm. Okay, like this. So teeth and lip. Labiodental. Okay. So now, and this is the same. Okay, this, this part of the word is the same. So let's practice the transition between the two. Okay? You, you don't need to make a sound. You can just practice by doing the mouth position silently. You can practice on the train. You can practice in the library. Okay, good. Now, the second question for the very, my, my very intelligent, my very good students is, what is the vowel sound in these words? Okay. What is the vowel sound? Is it like, oh, or ooh, or eh? Who can tell me? who is a very, very excellent pronunciator. <laughs> that, that's not a word, pronunciator. I don't think that's a word. Pronouncer? It doesn't, doesn't sound right. I'm going to say pronunciator. I think I've invented this word, but I like it. So who's a good pronunciator? Tell me. I'm waiting. <laughs> so... Um, uh, okay, so <laughs> Rafi, Rafi says that he is a bludger. Great word, Rafi, a bludger. Um, a bludger is somebody who, who is very lazy, who doesn't do anything. Well, Rafi, stop being a bludger. Go and do something. Come on. <laughs> um, okay, so Marco says that it's ooh. And um, Luis says that it's uh, uh. <laughs> and Marcelo says it's the same sound that's in bird. Very good. So this is schwa. Okay, schwa. It is the zombie sound. It's called the zombie sound because you have to remove your brain like a zombie. Uh. Uh, okay, totally relaxed face, relaxed jaw, everything relaxed. You're just passing the air. Uh. So, when I see you pronounce this word, then I can see if it's correct. Because here, if, you are, if your face is no, your face should be relaxed like a zombie. Okay, like this. Uh. And, and here I can see if your lips are ooh or v. I can see the pronunciation. This is important to remember. It's not abstract. It's, it's concrete. So, now let's practice. Worse, verse, worse, verse. Okay. So this is step one. Now, let's have a look at another way that you can practice pronunciation, okay? So, um, who can tell me the difference between this and this? What what is the correct mouth position in English for TH? How do we pronounce the TH in English? How? What is the position? Can you describe it? Can you explain it? Yes, very good, Mariam. The, the technical word for the zombie sound, okay, is schwa. And the, the phonetic symbol is like an E, like an E, but upside down, an upside down E. Like the E is like, the E had a lot of tequila and it went, uh. <laughs> um, so Marcelo wants to know, 
What is the best book to improve your English and have fun at the same time? I know that maybe my answer sounds a bit disingenuous, Marcelo, but the best book to improve your English is the book that you enjoy reading. You know, um, I recommend the, the grammar in use books if you want to do some grammar activities, but if you want to improve your vocabulary um, and just English in general, then buy a book that you're interested in. You know, I, I can't recommend a book for you because I don't know what type of books you like. But buy a book that you can't put down, that, that you're addicted to, that you, you need to know the story. This is the book that you should be reading. Okay, because then the English language is only a tool for reading. It's not the focus. So... Yeah, buy, buy a book that you like the story, okay? Read that. That's the best book for you, okay? Okay, very good. So, um, the tongue is between the teeth. Exactly. So, uh, the tongue between the teeth. So, some of you are saying that it's like a Z. Okay, it's not like a Z. It's not like S, like a snake. No. The TH... The TH is, I need to see your tongue, okay? Okay? If, if I don't see your tongue, you're not pronouncing it correctly. I need to see your tongue, okay? So now, a test for you. I, I am going to pronounce one of these words, and you tell me which word I'm pronouncing, Okay? This one or this one? Which word did I just say? Tell me. I hope that it was very obvious from my physical, you know, my physical posture. Let me do it again. Which one? This one or this one? Very good, Mayella, and Katty, and Patricia. You're absolutely correct. The second one, Amacor, Luis, the French Leo, Sastrawan, Sachin, Venchi, uh, Ashan. Yeah, you, you, are, you are all correct. You, you can see my tongue. So when you are practicing your pronunciation at home, you know, sometimes the sound... Of course, the sound is important, but the physical aspect is so important. So now let's look at one which is maybe a little bit more abstract, okay? Um, now, if you are French... I don't know how many people in here are French. This, this is a, a big problem for you. Because for a French person, these words sometimes sound the same when they pronounce them in English. Okay? But let's look at the physical difference. Because if you can control the physical aspect, then the sound will be perfect. So the first one is ah. And look, look how open my mouth is. My mouth is very open. And if you look at my cheeks, okay, you will see I have tension. Ah, okay, ah. I'm pulling my cheeks back. So I have my mouth open. <laughs> Didier says that... He's not going to try to pronounce the TH right now because he's eating. <laughs> and it, it could be dangerous. <laughs> it's true, Didier, it's true. Um, okay, so, yeah, so this one here, okay? Ah, so my mouth is really open, ah, and I have tension in my cheeks, ah. But this one here, 
Okay, this is different. Here, my mouth is open as well, ah, but not as much, a little bit open. But the most important difference is this tension, the tension in the cheeks is not here in this word. Look, ah, ah. My cheeks, my cheeks are very relaxed. Ah. So look at the difference again. Ah, 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 ah. You can see my face. Look. Do you see that the, the main thing is the cheek? So when you're practicing at home, you can feel, you can feel the difference in the tension. Feel your mouth really opening. Ah, ah. Okay, so this is, this is more difficult now. So, which word am I pronouncing? Are you ready? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> which one? Which one? Tell me. Tell me. <laughs> so... <laughs> Lu Luis, Luis says that French people pronounce English so badly. Um, I, I don't think that it's a case of, of badly, but I think that French people pronounce English with a French accent. And so <laughs> I think that sometimes this can cause problems with understanding. So to improve this, to improve this physical aspect will improve all of the French people in the world. Okay, so very good, guys. You know, Katy, Patricia, uh, John, Guitaref, Gita uh, Sachin, Mariam, Fabrizio. Um, exactly. Cut. Okay, because my face was very relaxed. And if you look at the, the first one, do you see the... Look, look at the tension. Okay. And so when you're at home now and maybe you're, you're reading, when you're reading some English later, just f try and feel that difference. Okay. We'll do one more. We're going to do one more and then we're going to do a different activity. Okay. So, um, <laughs> um, Okay, now again, for um, a lot of people, depending on which language is your native language, the difference between these two sounds is small. It's a little difference. But to me, as a native speaker, I can really hear the difference. Now, normally, this isn't a problem. A majority of the time, it's not a problem because I know which word you are using from the context. And that's why, you know, pronunciation is, um, is important, but it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? But, but let's, let's look at um, the difference between these two sounds. So this one here, okay, <laughs> and, you know, if you are from a language in which all of the letters are pronounced, a phonet, uh, a f true phonetic language like Portuguese or this is for you this is a nightmare an A and a U and a G and a H but okay this sound is or or so <clears throat> you can see that my mouth is very forward or or and I do have I do have a little bit of a change in the vowel, okay? It's it's not necessary to have to, to make a diphthong here. Okay, you could change the vowel if you want, but it's not necessary. Or so look at my lips. Or or very forward, okay? And where's my tongue? My tongue is really important in this sound. Or okay, so. I can feel that my tongue is 
very flat and down. Okay, my tongue is down here, relaxing. My tongue is like, oh. <laughs> okay, so, oh, oh, oh. Okay? Now, this one here, this, the difference is a very, very clear diphthong. We have two sounds. Oh, oh. So you can see how the first, the first vowel, my mouth is very open. And then we transition, we transition here. Oh, and you can see my mouth closed. Look, oh, oh. And my lips, at the beginning, they are back. And then they come forward. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, so, wow. You know, you can see a huge difference, right? <laughs> Look, it, it, even, even I feel ridiculous practicing like this, but... But when, when you can see, when you can see the difference and you hear the difference, it's worth it. It's worth looking like an idiot, okay? <laughs> so, okay, so caught, coat, caught, coat. Now, which word am I pronouncing? Which one? Hmm, which word? Let me pronounce it again. Hmm, so let me, let me do it from the side view as well, okay? Hmm, which one? Is it this one or this one? Let's see if you can tell. Very good, Mario. Very good, Maella. Um, excellent, Katty. Didier. Uh, the f Amanda. So, French Leo, no. It was not the first one. It was the second one. Okay? So, yes. Nasa, Mariam, Patricia. I was, I was pronouncing the second word. Okay? You can, if you, if you look at the middle, you can see that transition, okay? But if I do the first word, you can see that the transition is different, okay? It's from consonant, from consonant to vowel. But the vowel has no transition. I don't have this, okay? So, so, again, this is something that you can practice in your house. Feel the difference. You know, I, I can hear it. I can see if you're pronouncing it correctly. Remember that. Okay. Now, um, I want to play a little game with you. And I don't know if it's possible right now where you are i don't know if you are on a train or at work or but for this activity it would be good if you had a pencil and some paper okay so or, or something to to take some some very simple notes it doesn't it doesn't have to be a big piece of paper you could use you know you could use a very small piece of paper okay but we are um we're going to do a personality test, okay? We are, we are going to discover what type of personality you have. This could be interesting. I think it could be very interesting. And we're going to learn 
lots of new adjectives to describe personality. Okay? So there are 10 questions, 10 questions, and each question is multiple choice. Okay, so you have A, B, A, B, C, or D. So on your piece of paper or on your, on your hand or wherever, okay, you need to write down, are you A, B, C, or D for each question, okay? So um, the first question about your personality, okay? Now, first I'm going to just say it, and then after I will write it on the board so you can practice your listening. And if you're not sure about the vocabulary, then tell me. Okay, so uh, let me just do this. There we go. Okay. The first, the first question, A, B, C, or D, is are you a person who A, likes authority, B, enthusiastic, C, you are sensitive, or D, you like interaction. So let me repeat. A, you like authority, B, you are enthusiastic, C, you are very sensitive, or D, you like interaction. So, which one are you, A, B, C, or D? Um, you know, I don't, I don't think that I'm going to write it on the board. No, I think that, I think that you, can, you can understand me. So, please tell me if you don't have, if you don't understand Okay? Or if, if you don't know this vocabulary. Okay, so... Um, but remember that in a lot of languages, sensitive, okay? Sensitive is a false friend. In English, sensitive means that you, your feelings are very delicate. Okay? Okay. Very good, guys. I see that a lot of you, I see, a lot of you are very sensitive. That's very nice. That's very nice. Uh, Luis, authority in what context? Um, I think basically it means that you, you like people to tell you what to do. Not that you like to tell people what to do. Is You like to be controlled. You like people to give you instructions. That's, that's what it means. Um, okay. Hello, Natalia. Don't worry about being late. No problems. <laughs> in, I live in Spain. In Spain, everybody is late for everything. In fact, if you arrive 15 minutes late, this is actually on time in Spain. So, yeah. No problems. <laughs> uh, okay, question number two. Do you like to take charge? Take charge? Or do you like to take risks? To take risks? Or are you loyal? Loyal? Or are you accurate? Okay, I'm going to write a couple of these words, okay, because I think they're difficult to understand, okay, so. Loyal and accurate. So, uh, loyal, you know, like a, a dog is loyal, it's always uh, by your side, faithful, and accurate, precise, um, precise. <laughs> I can't think of another synonym precise. <laughs> okay, so are you, do you like to take charge? To take risks? Are you loyal or are you accurate? Hmm, which one? Which one? 
So Fabrizio, see, he's loyal. Some accurate people here. Um, okay, lots of C's and D's. Very interesting. Um, no problems, Pasquale. I will see you later. No problems. Have a have a good day at work. Uh, okay. Okay. Good. Good. Great answers, guys. Okay. Uh, next question is: Are you determined? Determined? Are you a visionary? Visionary? Are you calm? Calm? Or are you consistent? Determined. You know, you know exactly what you want and you're going to get it. Determined. Or visionary. You have a vision. You're going to change the world or you're going to create something new or calm, relaxed, tranquil, or consistent. You know, every day the same thing, reliable. You know, people can depend on you. Mm. Okay. Some A's. F finally, we have some A's. <laughs> so again, lots of C's and D's. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Okay. The next one, question number four. Are you enterprising? So, enterprising. Verbal. Verbal. You like routine. Or you are predictable. Ooh, okay, so enterprising. Enterprising, uh, verbal, uh, routine. So, are you enterprising? You, you like to um, create opportunities and do business and have movement, you know, enterprising? Or are you verbal? You like to talk a lot. Yes? My, my, my writing is really bad. I'm sorry. I'm so, I, I should have been a doctor. Do you like routine? Every day, the same thing, consistency. Or are you predictable? You know, you're not, mm, what's the word, um, you're not spontaneous, you are, I know exactly what you're going to do. Ah. Thumb, it's a lot of B's, lots of B's and A's all of a sudden. Okay, okay, very good, very good, okay. Okay, question five. Are you... Competitive, uh, promoter, you don't like change, or you are practical. Hmm. Okay, so, competitive. Uh, promoter. Promoter. Don't like change or um, practical. Mm. Competitive. You know, you, you like competition. A promoter. You are always, you know, encouraging people. Come on, let's do this and let's do this activity. And you're, you know, you're always trying to promote activities and things. You don't like change. You want things to always be the same. Or are you practical? You know, you don't like to dream and have imagination. You're a practical person. Practicality. So, Lenny is A and D. <laughs> A and D. 
Competitive and practical. Okay. <laughs> no, fair enough. Um, Lenny, you have a beautiful voice, I believe. Yes. Yes, you do. Uh, okay. Um, okay. So Fabrizio wants to know if promoter and enterprising are synonyms. Not really. No, because um, enterprising means that you look for opportunities to do business. But a promoter is not necessarily trying to do business. They are trying to, um, I don't know, they are um, more encouraging. They are more um, maybe helping other people, trying to make things happen. It doesn't necessarily have to be business. I guess. <laughs> SAT says that he is A and B and D. Okay, only one, only one, okay? <laughs> you, you have split, split personality. Okay. Um, uh, okay, number six. Number six. Are you a problem solver? Do you like being popular? You want to be popular? Do you give in? Ooh, do you know this phrasal verb, to give in? Or are you factual? Give in, factual, or popular. Or uh, what's the first one? Problem solver. So solving problems, popular. To give in. To give in means to surrender. Okay. I, I give in. You, you do what you want. Uh, I don't want to argue. I'm flexible. I'm easy. I give in. Okay. Factual. You don't want to talk about, you know, to talk about poetry and abstract concepts. You want facts. Hard information. Uh, okay. So, yes, the French Leo says he likes to solve problems. He likes to settle situations. Okay, good. Good. So, we have lots of A's and B's now. This is interesting. Lu Louise says that she is none of these options. Oh, my God. Um... You have to choose, Louise. I know it's not easy, but you have to choose one. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yes, give. the French Leo says that give in and give up are similar. Yes, in some ways they are similar. But normally give in is like to um, give in in a situation of negotiation. But give up is more like uh, maybe, you know, give up smoking to stop, to stop doing something, to stop completely. <laughs> Amanda says that she is C with her mum. <laughs> it's true. With, with your mum, you, you have to give in all the time. <laughs> it's, it's very true. Okay. Um... Okay, uh, listen, we'll, we'll, um, uh, so number seven, number seven. Are you productive? You like to produce things? I hope so. I want you to produce English, okay? Uh, B, um, fun loving. You love to have fun. Uh, C, you avoid confrontation. You don't like confronting people. No confrontation. Okay. Or are you conscientious? Oh, great word. Conscientious. Conscientious. You, you basically, you are a good person. You, um, always, you always do the correct thing. I'm curious about 
about the, what the dictionary definition of of um, conscientious is. So I'm going to look. I'm going to look in the dictionary because I'm curious. Con, conscien, conscientious, conscientious. Um, you are um, careful about doing things that you are supposed to do. And you are, you want to do things correctly. Yeah, so, yeah, you, you always want to do the correct thing. You know, finish your homework, clean the house, do what your mum says, Amanda. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, uh, we have B's and C's and D's. Okay, okay, good, good. Okay, the final question. The final question is, are you bold? Great word, bold. Are you bold? Do you like variety? Do you like variety? Are you sympathetic? Or are you a perfectionist? Oh. Bold, audacious, um, shocking, um, strong-willed, bold. Um, uh, variety, sympathetic. Sympathetic or a perfectionist. So, are you bold? Do you like variety? You know, different things all the time. Different food, different girlfriend, <laughs> different house, different country. Um, <laughs> are you sympathetic? You, you feel sympathy for other people's situations or problems. Or are you a perfectionist? Everything has to be perfect. Okay, so... Now, uh, yeah, so Vinci says, uh, Vinci says that he likes variety. Me too. It's good to, um, to try different things. Um, personally, I'm a person who I, I don't like routine. You know, I want, um, I want every day to be, to be different. This, this would be ideal for me. Um, so now, the results. Okay, so if... If mainly you were A, okay, if, if a majority of your answers were A, then you are a lion. Oh my god, it's Tyson. Hello, Luca. Look at Come and say hello to everybody. Say hello. Look at that. What, what's that, Luca? What's that? It's a dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Are you going to eat them? Go on then, go eat them. He just um, he just finished um, nursery. So okay, so yes, if if you said A, then you are a lion. This means that you are a leader. You are decisive, and you like to lead. You don't like to watch. Good. Okay. Um, if you said if you said mainly B, then you are an otter. Uh, this is another another animal, an otter. It lives in the water. Okay, otter, otter. Okay, otter. You are, you are always looking to party, always looking for fun, and you love to talk, and you love to motivate people, and work in a team. Good, good. Okay. Um, C. If you said C, then you are a golden retriever. A golden retriever. Do you know what this is? This is uh, a, a type of dog. Similar to a Labrador. Ah, similar, okay. Um, 
It says here, one word describes you, loyal. You are so loyal that you absorb the pain and the punishment of other people, but you continue to be committed. Wow. You are good listeners. You are sympathetic. But you have problems to be assertive. Wow. Deep. Deep. <laughs> okay. And the final one. The final one is if you are B. <laughs> if, if, you, if you are D then, then you are a beaver. <laughs> do, do you know what this animal is? A beaver? <laughs> it's a... Uh, it's a very productive animal, okay? It says that beavers are strong and they like to do things correctly and by the book. You like to follow the rules. Um, you are really good at working in an office, controlling quality, working as an accountant or an engineer, for example. And you have very high standards. Wow. So there you go. <laughs> According to this, there are only four types of personality in the world. <laughs> well, obviously the, the activity, the, the result is ridiculous, but it's a great activity to learn some adjectives, personality adjectives. So, it's almost two o'clock, and um, before I go, I just want to say one thing, is that... Um, you know, a lot of you will watch this class. A lot of people, you know, thousands, thousands of people will watch this class. But a majority of you, a lot of you will be too afraid and too, too shy to practice your English, to put yourself out there. Okay? But I want you to remember something. Okay? A ship in the harbor is safe. But that's not what ships are for, okay? That's something that's really important for you to remember, okay? Language evolved more than 60,000 years ago so that we could communicate with each other, okay? And if you only use English for studying, if you only use English to pass exams, then... That is not what English is for, okay? Languages were built, they evolved for communication. So this week, I want you to put yourself in danger. Come out of the harbor and produce something. Go out and talk to somebody in English. Use one of the websites, okay, to, to find a speaking partner. Send me an email, write some text, okay? Come out of the harbor, take a risk, and you will be rewarded. Go out and discover the beauty of communication. Have an experience, and that, that's all I want to say. That was deep. <laughs> so, um, listen, guys, um, thank you all very much for watching. Um, you, you are really the funniest and the most entertaining students um, in the world, from all over the world. And I'm so, I'm so lucky to, to have you all in this class today. So thank you very much. Um, I'm Christian. This is Kangaroo English. And I'll see you in class. Bye. <laughs>